This is a walkthrough of Philip Newman's uh, Evituchesnok, um, which is just the word consecutive spelled backwards, which is riffing on the fact that this is a non-consecutive Sudoku. What does that mean? So first of all, we're following normal Sudoku rules. So we have to place the digits one through nine in each row, each column, and each three by three outlined region. On top of that, digits that are orthogonally adjacent, which means ones that are direct neighbors kind of touching each other along an edge, like these cells, for instance, or these cells, or these cells, can't contain consecutive digits. In other words, they can't contain digits that have a difference of one. So we couldn't place, for example, one and two here because those are consecutive numbers. They're not allowed to touch each other. This is a true blind solve. I haven't tested this one previously. Non-consecutive is not one of my strengths as a solver, so I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. So where should we start? I'm scanning this at first, looking for essentially classic Sudoku deductions. So I'm looking for places where I have multiple identical givens that might allow me to restrict that given in another row, column, or region. And the only thing I'm picking up on immediately is these twos, which put a two down here, and these eights, which put an eight up here. And neither of those are further restricted by the non-consecutive rule or anything along those lines. So I don't think that that's where we're meant to start. So the next thing I see is this five, right in the middle, it kind of, have a, kind of has a place of honor, right? So it has two digits that are consecutive to it, four and six. So we can't place a four or six in any of the four cells surrounding it. And then luckily we also have a four and a six in these regions next to it. So six can't go into any of these cells, so six is in one of these. And four can't go into any of these cells, so four is in one of these. Now, because there's a four here and there's a four in one of these cells, where do we put our four in row five? We can only put it there. Unfortunately, the consecutive rule doesn't restrict that any further. Similarly with sixes, we place a six into one of these cells. So that's interesting, but that didn't quite give us a toehold in the puzzle. So let's see what else we can maybe do here. My next thought is, are there kind of mirrors of that deduction elsewhere? So I'm seeing these three and seven digits in the centers of their boxes, and they're kind of mirrored by a two and an eight, which are consecutive digits with them. This two keeps me from putting a two in any of these cells. And okay, here we go. This is actually going to give us a digit. So we can't put a two next to the three. So we also can't put a two into any of these cells. So the two must go there. Mirroring that, we can't put an 8 in these cells by Sudoku, and we can't put an 8 in any of the cells next to the 7, so the 8 must go there. That means these cells contain a 2-8 pair by Sudoku, because we have 2 and 8 in both of these areas. So that's the only place we can put 2 and 8 now. So now these cells can't be 4 or 6, can't be 2 or 8, so they have to be, and they can't be 1 or 9, because there's a 1 and a 9 in the row. So these have to contain 3 and 7. So that's interesting. Looking at this row, which is kind of the rapidly becoming restricted, it stands out to me because I'm only missing my even digits. I have all of my odd digits. I have a 1, 5, 9, and I have a 3, 7 pair. So what can I do with the fact that I'm only missing even digits at this point? Well, I need to place a 2 somewhere. And 2 can't go next to the 1, so 2 must go over here. But I already figured out earlier that 4 must go over here. So this is a 2-4 pair. Similarly, this is a 6-8 pair, because 8 can't go over here next to the 9, so it must go over here next to the 1. And if you look earlier in the video, uh, I explained how we proved that the 4s have to go there and the 6s have to go here, so that gives us pairs on each of them. So that's kind of useful. It doesn't give us a digit right away, but it does give us something to work with. So what else can we do now? These have to be 1, 4, 6, and 9 in some configuration. And I notice that this can't be a 9 and that can't be a 1 because of the consecutiveness with 8 and with 2. But that's not enough for me to really mark anything there just yet. Do we have anything going on that's similar to those early deductions. Yes, we do. So I'm looking because this configuration of digits where we have a digit in the center of the region and then we have a digit diagonally touching it ended up being incredibly useful earlier. And I'm looking for other places where I can do that. And that did pay off for me. So I have a two in the center of this region and I have a one up here. The one can't go in those cells by Sudoku and it also can't go next to the two. So it must go here. 
Here I have an 8 in the center of the region, and I have a 7 up here. So 9 can't go in these cells by Sudoku, and it can't go in these cells because of the consecutive rule. So 9 must go there. So now 9 has to go into one of those cells by Sudoku in that region, and 1 has to go into one of those cells by Sudoku in this region. Now, can I do the same thing with these digits? Yes, I actually can. So this is just, this is the theme of the puzzle. We're just going to see over and over until it's solved. So we've got a 7 here. That keeps 7 from going into those cells. 7 can't go here or here by Sudoku, and 7 can't go here for two reasons. One, because of the 7 in the row, and also because of the consecutive rule. And I think I misspoke there. 7 can't go here or here because of the consecutive rule, not because of Sudoku. The other deductions are Sudoku rules. So, up here, same thing. 3 is blocked off from these cells by Sudoku and from these by the consecutive rule, so that's going to be a 3. And now that I have threes here, I can make this not just ones, but a one three pair. Same deal here. So I have sevens here, so I can make this not just nines, but a seven nine pair. And these regions on the two sides of the center region are now becoming really, really restricted. So the only things I can place in these cells now are my remaining digits two, three, and five. And I'm scanning to see if there's anything that I can't put those next to, but I don't see it yet. But we have that triple now. These are going to be 5, 7, and 8, and again, nothing that's restricted in terms of where I can place those right now, but we do have those, we'll hold on to them, and they should resolve themselves later. So, what else do we need to do here? So, I did notice that what was really driving this solve was the location of digits that are consecutive with the center digits in each region. And there are some of those I haven't really thought about yet. So for instance, 6 is consecutive with 5. And so 5 can't go in any of those cells. Oh, and this is actually going to give us another digit because 4 can't be consecutive with 5 either. So 5 can't go there. So I'm going to place a 5 here and eliminate a 5 from that cell. So let's grab the mirror deduction because this is a fully symmetrical puzzle. We can't place 5 in those cells because it's consecutive to 4. And we can't place it here because it's consecutive with 6. So we're going to put it here. That eliminates 5 from there. Now there's a 5 here, and there's a 5 in one of those two cells. And that gives us a few things. It's going to give us a Sudoku deduction, where 5 is eliminated from these positions, and then also from here because of the 5 in row 9, so that's a 5. And it's also going to give us something really cute. I'm not sure it's required to solve this puzzle, but I want to show it to you anyways because I think it's a really nice move, even if it is a little bit above the typical difficulty for gas. So one of these cells is a 5, right? You don't know which one, but you know that one of them is a 5. So 5 can never be next to 4. Well, if this cell had a 4 in it, then no matter which of those positions the 5 was in, it would end up having a 4 next to it. It would be either above or below it. So this cell can't be a 4 regardless of where the 5 can go. Similarly here, one of those is a 5, so we can't put a 6 here because then it would end up being next to the 5 regardless of where the 5 went. So that must be an E, and that's a 6. And now the 4 and 6 tell us which order these 3 and 7 go in. Now we can place a 3 in one of those cells, but we can't definitively place it yet. Okay, are there any other positions where we have... Yeah, we haven't dealt with this center cell completely yet because it's also consecutive with 4. We can't place a 4 in there, so we have to put a 4 into one of those cells. That actually eliminates 4 from here because 4 is in one of these two cells, so it can't go anywhere else in its column. Therefore, we put a 4 here. Similarly, no 6 in these cells, so there's a 6 in one of these. That keeps us from placing a 6 here, so we're going to place a 6 there. Now we need to place a 1 and a 9, and we don't have an order for those yet, but we should soon. This one, we've already looked at both of the consecutive digits. This, we've looked at the consecutive digits, so I don't know that we're going to get a lot more out of that. We have to put a 6 into one of these positions, but we can't sort those out immediately. Oh, now that I'm down here, though, I do see a Sudoku deduction. So 2 and 2 in row 7 and 8 will place a 2 here. And mirroring that, 8 and 8 here will place an 8 there. And now these columns look like there's not a lot of room left in them, so I need a 3, 4, and 5 in this column. So this has to be my 4, which places a 4 there. And these have to be my 3 and 5. I can't put a 5 next to the 6, so I know the order. And so in this column, I have 6, 7, and... Um, two roommate or not two <laughs> um what is the last digit i need to put there see it's just six and seven i just need to place a six and a seven there um so where am i going to put them 
Uh, I don't think I can determine the order of those yet. Can I? I think I need to have probably placed some more stuff before. Oh, six and seven. So there's a seven in the bottom row. I was wondering because this puzzle is fully symmetrical. So if you are not able to get a deduction that's symmetrical to something you just figured out, it probably means something has gone wrong. Okay. But we're good now. Six eliminates six from these positions, and as marked before, six can't go here. So six goes here, and that places a three here. That's the only remaining position for three in the region. So here we need to place a... what? Not sure. Let's finish row one. So we need to place one, six, and nine in row one. That can't be a six for a couple of different reasons. That can't be a one because it's next to two. This can't be a 9, because there's a 9 both in the region and in the column. Here we need to place 2, 3, and 6. So the 2 goes here, 6 goes here, and 3 goes here, just by Sudoku. The 3 can't go in those positions, so the 3 goes here. 2 also can't go next to 3, so that's a 5. That eliminates 5 from this position, which places a 5 here. And now do I get any further eliminations there? It's easy to miss one, so we have to be careful. Okay, let's have uh, 1, 6, and 4 in this column. So this is either 1 or 4, and this is 1 or 6, because there's a 4 in the region already. So that's my 4. Now when I need to place a 1 in this region, I can only go there. And my last digit in this region will be an 8. Now I need a 2 at the top of this column. That is dealt with. And I need a 5 in this row, which can only go here. And I'll, I'll call it out if I'm using consecutive rules again, but I think I've reached a point where the momentum is coming mostly from the standard Sudoku rules. So I still need an 8 and 9 in this row by Sudoku, and I need a 4 and a 7 here. I have a 7 already in row 9, so it'll go there. I need to place a 4 in this row. My 6 makes this a 9, 1, 6, and 1. Now I need a 6 and a 9 here, that's a 6, and that is a 9, and I can finish this column using the numbers I already have. And I can finish this one as well. In these two cells I'm going to need a 5 and a 7, and those are resolved. And because I already have a 1 in the column, I can resolve that. That will resolve the 1 and 3, and the 7 and 9, and also the 2 and the 8, and we're nearly finished. We still need a 9 in this column and a 1 here. And that's how you solve Philip's backwards non-consecutive.